So, dear brothers, uh, uh, today is a very important class. Uh, uh, and uh, today's class uh, is uh, going to be a lengthy class. That means uh, it won't be only for uh, a single week. It will be going for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> so, I request everybody to please uh, concentrate on the subject uh, and make uh, notes if possible. So, any doubts, any questions uh, you have, uh, you can ask at the end of uh, each every subject. So, it will be going on probably for, uh, I think, uh, eight hours. So, we'll break it uh, in, uh, as much as possible and try to take it up. So, by end of the class, uh, I think uh, all the doubts will be clear. If even after all these uh, things, you have still have doubts, uh, you can uh, definitely uh, say approach us and uh, you can contact us whenever you want or you can ask the doubts after the class. Okay. So today, our subject uh, is about uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, we are going to study about uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, so what does the Bible say about the uh, Holy Spirit? Uh, so we are going to study uh, detailly about the, uh, uh, you see, the scriptural uh, standpoint of uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay. <clears throat> we all know that uh, Jesus was uh, anointed uh, with the uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, is it that at uh, River Jordan, you see? He received the Spirit of God, you see, and God anointed him with the Holy Spirit. So, if you see, uh, how much Holy Spirit did God give to Jesus? If you see, God gave him without measure. So, let us read John 3.34, brother. Can any of you read, brother? Most of the Krishna, brother? John 3.34. Yeah, okay, brother. Hmm. For he... Whom God has sent, speaking the word of God, for God given not the spirit by measure unto him. See, God has not given the spirit by measure. That means immeasurably God has uh, given the spirit to him. So if this was uh, proof that Jesus himself received uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, you see, that means, uh, what does it mean? You see, if Jesus himself received the Holy Spirit and then uh, Jesus did not have this one, huh? then uh, Jesus had to receive this from, from uh, God, uh, you see. And uh, uh, so, Holy Spirit uh, came upon Jesus. Okay. Now, let us read one more verse uh, in uh, Matthew 12.32, brother. Matthew 12.32. Krishna, brother, can you read? Do you have the Bible? Can you read? Krishna Vidar, you are there? Okay. Um, Mosa Vidar, can you read? Okay, brother. Matthew 12, verse 32. And whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But Whosoever speak of in the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You see, it says, if anybody speaks anything against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. forgiven. Huh? Not only in this world, but even in the world to come. You see, we have studied about the three worlds, no? the world to come. You see, the first world, the second world, third world. So, so, anything you speak against Jesus, even that will be forgiven. But anything if you see, speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall never be forgiven, dear Buddhana. So, this uh, verse uh, <clears throat> gives us a other picture that the uh, Holy Spirit uh, is uh, much greater than Jesus. Uh, you see, the Holy Spirit is more powerful then Jesus, that anybody speaking against Jesus will be forgiven, but anybody who speaks uh, against Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven at all. You see? Then, uh, the, this uh, is a clear picture that the uh, Holy Spirit is more powerful and more greater than uh, Jesus. Uh, huh? Okay. Now, let us read one more verse. Matthew 16, 14. Brother. Matthew 16, 14. Hmm. Read, brother. Ah, read. Hello. 
brother so you are able to listen krishna brother you are able to listen i will read matthew matthew 16:14 no sir no 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 john 16:14 oh okay जून सिक्सटीन फोर्टी ओके हियर इज रिटर्न हि शैल ग्लोरिफाई मी फॉर हि शैल रिसीव ऑफ माइंड एंड शैल शू इट ऑन टू यू इसे होली स्पिरिट शैल ग्लोरिफाई जीजस इज हिम सर सी जस्ट बिफोर दिस वन वी सॉ दैट होली स्पिरिट यू सी इज मोर पावरफुल that anything you speak against uh, christ shall be forgiven but anything you speak against jesus uh, uh, sorry anything you speak against jesus shall be forgiven but anything you speak against holy spirit shall not be forgiven at all and here this verse says what is the work of the holy spirit he shall glorify jesus it seems and uh, how will the holy spirit speak he shall not speak of its own it seems he shall take from jesus and uh, show it to the you see god's children is him then uh, this was uh, seems to be telling that jesus is more powerful than the holy spirit uh, holy spirit is nothing holy spirit will only glorify jesus uh, and will take um, all the things uh, uh, he shall receive from jesus uh, and teach those things uh, then who is uh, great uh, or what is the meaning of a holy spirit you see when uh, jesus uh, received the holy spirit what happened actually you see a dove came upon him correct now huh? see read uh, matthew 316 brother matthew 316 brother can somebody read matthew 316 hmm. hmm read with the most of that डिसेंडिंग लाइक and lighting upon him you see so what happened here is was that uh, when jesus was baptized the heavens were opened it seems sir then what came the spirit of god uh, descended upon jesus uh, how it came it came like a dove it seems sir you see so uh, holy spirit means what uh, dove therefore the christians use the symbol no uh, wherever they use a white dove that signifies holy spirit because you see when jesus was baptized it came like a dove then what is holy spirit is it dove the dove is holy spirit let us read one more verse acts 2 3 but acts second chapter verse third verse boss brother can you read if you are having good network your uh, audio is not uh, able to uh, we are not able to hear your audio brother x23 is here ah now okay brother and there appear unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it said it's it said upon each of them you see and there uh, you see appeared unto cloven tongues like as fire it sat upon each of uh, them and uh, next verse brother verse 4 huh? okay brother hmm. and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them very utterance good. Yeah, very good so what happened it seems then they were filled with the holy spirit it seems sir here what happened was that uh, you see uh, the holy spirit 
came upon them like a cloven tongues of a fire. You see? Then what is Holy Spirit? Huh? Holy Spirit is fire. You see? Because of this uh, only many people, uh, you see, they pray for the Holy Spirit. Fire, fire, anoint us with fire. Revive us with fire. Revival fire. You see? Fire anointing. Uh, you see? Let the Spirit burn. Huh? All these things uh, we would have heard, no? So, why? Because, uh, you see, the Holy Spirit came uh, eh, in uh, form of, uh, you see, fire. Then uh, is fire Holy Spirit? Uh? Is fire Holy Spirit? Mm, water also? Uh -huh. No. Very good. Water also. Yes. Bible gives reference uh, about the Holy Spirit being water also. Very good. Let us read the verse, brother. Uh, that is given in, you see, John 7, 38, 39. Good, brother. Read John 7, 38 and 39. Hmm. He that believed on me, as the scripture has said, out of his barely shall follow rivers of living water. But this is back, he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. But the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet, yet glorified. See, the Holy Spirit was not yet given uh, because Jesus was not yet uh, huh? glorified. It seems, uh, you see, dear brethren, it says, uh, you see, uh, he that believes on me, out of his belly, the living water shall flow. It seems, uh, Jesus was actually referring to the Holy Spirit. Uh, then uh, is Holy Spirit uh, water. Uh, water means Holy Spirit. Uh, water signifies Holy Spirit. Uh, see, water is Holy Spirit. Uh, huh? Let us read other incident also. You see, in uh, <clears throat> John chapter 20, verse 22. John 20, 22, brother. Krishna, brother, can you read? You're there? John 20, 22. Yes, sir. John 20, 22. Oh. And when he had said this, oh. he breathed breath on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Okay. Jesus breathed on them oof, and told them to receive the Holy Spirit. So breath, oof, that is Holy Spirit. Eh? You see, wind, eh? breath, is it Holy Spirit? Eh? Many people, uh, just because of this one only, they breathe, no? Oof, Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit. Eh? Then what is Holy Spirit? Is it dove? Is it fire? Or is it breath? Or is it water? Huh? Let us read one more verse in John 6.63, brother. John 6.63. Mm. Mm. It is the spirit that can mm. the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words which I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The words which Jesus spoke, you see, they are spirit, it seems. The Holy Spirit means what? Jesus' words. Then, you see, dear brethren, there's so many, you see, huh? in context in the Bible, where Holy Spirit is compared to, you see, various things. Huh? Apostle Paul tells now, in Ephesians 5.18, what does it say? Huh? Be you filled with the Spirit. Correct, no? Ephesians 5.18 it says, be filled with the Spirit. Then if you want, if we need to be filled with the Spirit, then what is the meaning of it? Do we need to be filled with the dove? Huh? <clears throat> Tell me, or else do we need to be filled with fire? Or else do we need to be filled with water? Or else, do we need to be filled with breath? Huh? Or else, what is the meaning of Holy Spirit? Tell me, you say, huh? if there's Holy Spirit, is Dawa? Is Holy Spirit Dawa? Is Holy Spirit fire? Is Holy Spirit water? Is Holy Spirit breath? Tell me, yes or no? No, sir. Oh, very good. Our spiritual senses tell us 
that uh, this is not a literal uh, statement. Uh, these are all comparison, dear brethren. You see, Holy Spirit is compared to a dove. Not that Holy Spirit is a dove, isn't it? Huh? Let us read that verse again. You see, Matthew 3.16. Can you read again, brother? Matthew 3.16. Can anybody read again? Matthew 3.16. What actually happened there? Did dove, dove come or what come? Matthew 3.16, brother. Huh? <laughs> then Herod, when he Matthew, saw that Matthew, he was... Matthew, brother, 3, 3.16, not 2.16. 3.16. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll read. Oh. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. Like, like a, a dove. dove. Dove or like a dove? Like a dove. Like a dove. Holy Spirit never came huh? in the form of a dove. No, no, no. No dove came. You see? Everybody thinks, oh, dove came, dove came, dove came. No, no, no. It came, you see, and rested like a dove, softly. You see, it came like a dove. Doesn't mean that a dove came. Huh? So we should be very careful in reading the Bible. See, in Acts second chapter also, what happened? Everybody thinks that the fire came, fire came, fire came. Read Acts 2. Acts 2. <clears throat> Acts 2. 2 and 3, brother. Acts 2, 2 and 3, brother. Huh. Also, brother, can you read? Acts 2nd chapter 2 and 3. Master Madhar, you are there? Yeah, brother, okay. Acts 2, 2 and 3, yeah? Hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the houses where they where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each of them. You see? Like as fire, like as wind. Not that wind came, not a fire came. This is just a comparison. Even in uh, John, uh, you see, seventh chapter where Jesus told that uh, water sir, living water shall flow from your belly. Does it mean literally uh, water will flow from our belly? Yeah? This is all comparison. Even Jesus, uh, you see, the Holy Spirit means water. That is a comparison, you see. And uh, what did Jesus say? The words which I speak, there are spirit unto you. These are all comparison, dear brethren. These are all not literal statements, sir. you see. Therefore, what is the meaning of Holy Spirit in the Bible? You see, Jesus uh, in the Bible is comparing the Holy Spirit to a lot of things, sir. You see, it has been compared to a dove, it has been compared to fire, it is compared to water. You see, it has been compared to God's words also. You see, this is all only just comparison. Therefore, many people, you see, misunderstand uh, many verses uh, and claim that uh, Holy Spirit uh, is a person. You see, Holy Spirit, they think that uh, it is a person, is a personality. You see, he is a person. Uh, because uh, it is because of uh, misunderstanding of uh, many verses in the Bible. Let us read a few verses. You see, John 16, 13, brother. John 16, 13 and 14, brother. Huh. Can anybody read, brother? Huh. Hmm. What's up, brother? Krishna, brother? Hmm. How, how by when he, the spirit of truth, is came, come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whoever, the, whoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Ah, see, what did Jesus say? How about when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. Who will guide you? The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth it seems. Holy Spirit, he, you see, he will guide it seems. He shall not uh, speak of his own. He shall receive of me and show it to you. You see, he will show you. He, who? He. Huh? So, Holy Spirit. Uh. So, uh, many people uh, think that the Holy Spirit is a person because it is compared to a 
uh, person. Here the word he is used. Okay, that's the reason many believe that the uh, Holy Spirit is a person, it is a personality. Uh? Okay. Let us read Ecclesiastes 1 5. Brother. Ecclesiastes 1 5. Krishna brother, can you read Ecclesiastes 1 5? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Ecclesiastes 1 5. One five, oh. uh, and sun also ar arise, and the sun goes down and has to his place where he arose. See the sun, uh, to his place where he arose. The sun uh, goes to his place, it seems. So here you see, sun is compared to what uh, he, and does it mean that? Uh, there is a male and female uh, a son. Eh? Correct, no? You see, did you observe? Correct, no, brother? Did you observe? Mosam, brother? Krishna, brother? Did you observe? You see? Yes, eh? sir. Yes. Ah, son is compared to he. Does it mean that uh, eh? there is a male and a female son? Is there a male and female son? Are they there? Tell me. Tell me. Is there a female no, and sir. male son? No. No. There is no bifurcation in the son, but yet uh, it is compared to huh? a, you see, personality. Yet it is compared to a person. It is compared to a, you see, a male person, not a female person. Why? Why son is compared to a male person? This is just a comparison. We know very well that son uh, is a neither male nor female. Correct, no? Huh? So, but even then, it is compared to male. Why? Can somebody tell me? What somebody can you tell me? Why son is compared to male? Why it is compared to a person? Any idea? It is, I think, literature style in those days. Okay. Uh, what's mother? What about you? Because uh, writer is uh, male dominant. From right. male Good. dominant society. Good. Okay. Mosam brother? I think in Bible, probably uh, is uh, uh, identified as mainly given chances for uh, person as male, no? So, <laughs> I think Good. Or, uh, is, is identified with God or uh, is identified with you know, something uh, good. Like as like as God. Good, good. See, good thoughts. See, we need to reason it out. Okay. See, why it is compared to male? Because there is a lot of uh, character difference between male and female. Correct, no? See, male people, uh, that means men are more bold. See, more courageous, more strong. You see? Huh? But uh, what about the uh, women? Women, are they more courageous and strong? No. They are more loving. Uh, they are more temperate. Uh, they are more sensitive. They are more caring. They have a lot of hospitality. They have a soft corner. Correct? No? So this is the difference between male and female. But when you see the sun, can you compare it to a female? No. Why? Because it's got so much of power. It's got so much of strength. You see? Hence, uh, this is uh, compared to a male. It's compared to a he in the Bible because it's got so many features of a male. Uh, you see, in... Uh, the sun, the brother. Therefore, there is just a comparison. Therefore, see, just because the Bible calls as the sun as a he, doesn't become a, a person or a personality. Correct now? Okay. Yeah? Correct now, brother? Correct now, both of you? Krishna, brother, Mosul, yes. brother? Yeah, yeah, yes, brother. Good. Okay, now let us read one more verse. Uh, Matthew 23, 37, brother. And one of you can read uh, Galatians 4.26 also. Oh. Oh. oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, though that killeth the prophet and stone that which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered the children together, even as a hen 
gather her children under her wings and it would not you see you would not here if you see jesus is speaking to jerusalem you see he's saying jerusalem jerusalem thou that killest the prophet okay i have gathered uh, how often i have gathered thy children even as a hen gathered her chickens correct now now here a jerusalem is compared to what read galatians 426 brother now galatians 426 hmm Hmm. Galatians 4.26 uh, I think Krishna Vodar ah, I'll, I'll read okay. But Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all See, Jerusalem is the mother of us all it seems so. See here again Jerusalem is compared to a you see female not for a male why why the land usually the lands are compared to male not to the female sorry lands are compared to the female not to the male why have you observed you see uh, india is called as father india or mother india mother india mother, mother india. india why because it has got the uh, features of a female as a woman as a mother carries a child, you see, in the womb, she bears all the burden, all the pain. Why? Because she's concerned about the child. Similarly, the whole world, you see, is bearing all the people like a mother because of love, concern, you see, empathy. Therefore, these are the characters of a female. Just because Jerusalem is compared to a female, does it mean that Jerusalem is a female? Does it mean that Jerusalem is a woman? No, it is just a comparison. It is a non-living thing. Correct? No? Jerusalem is just a place. It's a non-living thing. It is only a comparison. There is no male Jerusalem, no female Jerusalem, no sexual verification for a place. Correct? No? Okay. Let us read one more verse. First Corinthians. 13 5 brother. First Corinthians 13 5. Don't hmm. hmm. not behave itself unseemly, seek not her own. Ah, love. First Corinthians 13 chapter is a famous chapter about love. It's speaking about love. It says, Love seeketh not her own. Her. Love is compared to a, you see, a female, a woman. Why? Because naturally, woman has more love than male. Correct, no? When we fail in exams, we take our report card to get a signature from whom? Mother or father? If we fail in exam, we need to take the signature and the report card now. Whom will we show the report card? Will we show it to the father or mother? Uh, yes, uh, parents, uh, either mother or father in Nepal. Right. If you pass, you can show it to anybody. But fail, if you fail in the exam? Ah, oh. fail. Uh, it's, it's, it will be uh, more easy to show to uh, mother. mother. Mother means what? Sympathy. Uh, she will tell, why? What happened? Huh? Oh, your child, don't be like this one. Huh? Next time, put efforts. Huh? This time, okay? Next time, don't play too much. Huh? Okay, take the signature and she'll send off. But father means he'll give nicely. Correct? No? So, this is a feminine character. Compared to male, love is more uh, found in women. Therefore, here love is compared to, uh, you see, F a female. Does it mean that there is a, uh, a male love and a female love? Does it mean that love is a person? Or a personality? No, dear brother. These are all comparisons. Let us read one more verse in John 8 44, brother. John 8 44. John 8 44. Can somebody read? You are your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. You are the mother from the beginning, 
and about not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. You see? When devil is the father of it, sir. He, you see? Devil is a liar. He speaks lie. You see? He is, uh, Satan is again compared to he, 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 he. He's called the father. He's not called the mother. Eh? Then does it mean that uh, uh, there is a male uh, Satan and a female Satan? Uh, he devil and she devil? Eh? Is there any she devil also in the Bible? Uh? Tell me. He devil. Uh, he devil. What about she devil? No she devil. Uh? Eh? She devil. <laughs> uh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> In the angels, there is no male or female. Jesus gives this answer in the Bible itself. You see, a, if a Sadducee, you see, uh, came and uh, trapped uh, Jesus. Uh, you see, huh? how he told a story about a uh, woman marrying mm -hmm. seven husbands. And they put a question saying, in the resurrection, huh? This uh, woman shall be the wife of uh, which husband? And what did Jesus reply? What was the reply of Jesus? You know, what did Jesus reply? Can anybody tell me? What is, what is the reply of Jesus? Huh? Read with that. Luke 20. Luke 20. Verse 35. 20 verse 35. Uh -huh. But they we shall be accounted worthy to obtain the gold and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Hmm. Continue. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. See, they are equal to angels, it seems. Huh? That means uh, there is no male or female among angels, sir. Uh. So, if there is no male and female among angels, so how can you compare, uh, how can you tell that uh, Satan is a he devil? He can be she devil also, no? Dear brethren, here again, it is just a comparison. Here, Satan is called uh, as a devil. Huh? He is called as compared to he just because of the character features. You see, the very wild, you see, the nature of him and the very violent nature of him, the very, you see, powerful exhibition of his evil characters. These are all, you see, uh, majority found among uh, male. Hence, uh, he is compared to a father, dear brother. Doesn't mean that uh, he is a, a literal, uh, you see, uh, a person, what you say, a person or a personality. You see, dear brother, this is just a comparison. He's an angel. You see, he's an angel being. So, why these types of words have been used? You see, in our English, there is a, actually language bifurcation. Like, for example, masculine gender is there, then feminine gender is there, and neutral gender is there. Correct, no? In English. Huh? See, masculine gender means what? Boy, man. These are all what? Huh? Uh, you see, masculine gender. Uh, if a boy is coming, uh, how do we tell? He is coming. Right, uh, how do we tell? How do we address him? We address him that uh, he is coming. We don't tell she is coming. Uh, can we tell that she is coming? Uh, seeing a boy, if we tell she is coming, is it a proper sentence formation? No. You see? Uh, uh, how can we tell uh, like that. Uh, that is a improper uh, sentence formation. So, for a masculine, uh, uh, this one, the masculine gender is there. Similarly, you see, for uh, using for the female character, uh, feminine gender is there. You see, uh, uh, mother, uh, she is feeding the child. That, uh, that is a proper sentence formation. Mother, he is feeding the child. How is it? Uh? This is not a proper, you see, formation. This is not a proper gender application. For a woman, we need to use that word, she only. But while using for a male, we need to use uh, he. 
But there is other gender also that is a neutral gender. Like for example, car, table. You see, a car is coming. We don't tell, oh, she is coming. A car, she is coming. Will we tell like that one? Will we tell like that one? Is it a proper sentence formation? No. Oh. You see, we can't tell. You see, uh, the bicycle is coming. That is not a proper. Uh, these are all, uh, you see, neutral things. Uh, you see, lifeless things. Uh, isn't it? Therefore, we run. In English, there are three words. He, she, and it. For neutral things, we use the word it. You see, car, it is coming. Table, push the table this side. Uh, see, so this one, these words are neutral words. Uh, see, he, she, and it. But, uh, you see, dear brethren, in Greek, uh, for all this uh, gender, you know, what is the word that is used? That is, the word that is used is autos. Greek, concordance number 1438. You see, and this is the word wherever Jesus used in the gospel, this is the word that is used. And the meaning of this one Autos is, uh, you see, the definition is given here itself. It is uh, he, she, or it. Like uh, John 16, 13, Jesus said, no, when the spirit of uh, truth shall come, he shall guide you into all truth. So he, that word he, is from the Greek word, autos. You see, see, I just now gave you an example about, uh, you see, gender bifurcation. You see, in uh, Greek or Hebrew, there is no gender bifurcation at all. You see, for all these three genders, there is only one Greek word. That is atas. You can use it whichever way you want it. You can use it for a masculine gender. You can use it for a feminine gender. You can even use it for a neutral gender. That is what has happened in the Bible. You see, whenever uh, they have translated the Bible, they have used... Uh, this word in comparison to a, you see, a male person. Therefore, son is compared to a male person. Devil is compared to a male person. You see, but uh, the mother and love is compared to a female person. Uh, why? Because based on the character, the other. So similarly, actually, if you see uh, the word Holy Spirit, uh, wherever it comes, you see, uh, that word he is used doesn't really mean that it is a person or a personality. Okay? This is just a comparison. Why? Why that comparison is given? If you see, in our Bible, our God is compared to male or female. He is compared to what type of character? Male character male. or female character? Male character. Male character. Uh, you see, the Lord God of Israel. You see, it doesn't say Lord as Goddess of Israel. Correct, no? So, Lord and God. It's come to a male character. Hence, uh, you see, His uh, Holy Spirit is also compared to He. Doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is a person, dear brother. This is just a comparison. And uh, one more thing is that, uh, you see, Jesus called Holy Spirit by name. What was the name of uh, Holy Spirit uh, that Jesus gave? Comforter. Comforter, very good. Now, uh, many people tell, brother, uh, if uh, uh, he, only he was used, uh, not a problem, but Jesus called it as a comforter. You see, comforter means what? Uh, it should definitely be a person. Okay? So, if you see in the Bible, the word comforter actually comes only four times in the gospel. That too in which gospel? Only in the gospel of John. That too in 14 chapter. 15 chapter and 16 chapter, it just appears only four times in the Bible. Only, only in these four times is that word comforter used in the entire Bible. Imagine such a very important doctrine about the Holy Spirit being a comforter. Why is it used only four times? If you see, here with the, the word comforter is from the Greek word parakletos. Which means to help, assist, and guide. Okay, so why did Jesus use these words uh, to help, assist, and guide to the disciples? If you see, we need to see the background. Then let us open our Bibles to John 13, chapter. 
we all know that uh, john uh, 12 chapter you see since then uh, it is a detailed explanation of uh, you see the last moments of jesus life and john 13 chapter gives us the last very uh, last moments uh, about how he celebrated uh, his last uh, passover meal with the disciples on the upper room and since then how we went to gethsemane and after then how he is uh, persecuted and all these things and all that, and the death on the cross so john 13 chapter is speaking about the last moments uh, where jesus was spending with the disciples uh, we all know that the last uh, moments of jesus was not a very joyful moment when he had the last meal with the disciples it was a very solemn uh, moment everybody was so dull because uh, they knew that uh, uh, jesus was uh, leaving them you see but uh, suddenly you see jesus began to speak few words uh, which was quite disturbing to the disciples you see let us read what jesus told john 13 chapter brother 37 and 38 brother john 13 chapter 37 and 38 brother huh? Also, brother, Krishna, brother, you are later online. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for the sake. Jesus answered him, With though lay down the life for my sake, verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Hmm? What did Jesus say? He said, I will leave thee and go. I will leave and go. You will all leave me and go. Then suddenly, uh, Peter said, No, no, Master, don't speak like this uh, lightly about me. I am not like uh, others. I will uh, die with you. I will come to you. I will be with you. Even uh, if I go to prison also, I will be with you. He, he told her. Immediately, what was the reaction of Jesus? Instead of telling you know, uh, to Peter, very good, Peter. Uh, you're not like other uh, 11 apostles. You're very uh, good to me, very kind to me. Uh, you're speaking very comfortable to me. He did not say that one. He said, what, you're going to be with me? Uh? You don't know about yourself. You're going to deny me thrice. When? Uh, just before the cock is going to crow, before that one, what will happen? Uh? You will deny me thrice. Himself. Imagine the scene. Everybody are very silently observing Jesus. Uh, and Peter said, I'm going to die for you. You see, huh? immediately Jesus, if he said these words, automatically what happened? Facial expression of all the apostles uh, changed. They all become very pale. They all become very dull. Jesus, we know that uh, Jesus had a talent to understand uh, others' thoughts. To read the facial expression. You see, Jesus had the talent. Uh, seeing their face, he could... Uh, Understand that they are very much decreased. Hence, to encourage them, Jesus spoke the words. What did he spoke? Continue reading. Sir. Continue. 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 John 14. Uh, Continue. Huh? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Ah, in my what did food. Jesus say? Jesus immediately said, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because he could see that they were quite, quite disturbed in their mind. Why they were disturbed? Jesus said, don't be disturbed. Don't worry. You believed in God, no? Believe on me also. Don't worry so much. Don't get frightened. See, don't get discouraged too much. Why did Jesus use these words? Because, you see, the disciples had left everything to follow Jesus. Why? They had left the fishing business. Matthew was an income tax officer. He had left the business to follow Jesus. Why? Not simply, dear brethren. It was for a benefit. What was a the benefit? They all thought that when Jesus is going to rule, you see, they are going to sit upon the 12 thrones of Israel and rule with Jesus. You see, let us read Matthew 19.28. Matthew 19.28. Matthew 19, 28. Krishna Buddha, you're there? You're concentrating? Yes, sir. I'm here. Good, good. Thank you. Matthew 19, 28, Buddha. Huh? May I read from screen? Ah, read, Buddha. Read, Buddha. Please. 
when Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. See, when Jesus shall sit on the throne, you shall also sit on how many thrones? Sir? Twelve thrones, it seems. That means Jesus will be in the center. Here are six thrones. This side, six thrones. So they will all be ruling with Jesus, it seems. Sir. This was the thought of apostles, sir. And they thought that this establishment of the kingdom will happen in their life itself. When they were living, Jesus would destroy the Romans. And uh, instead of the Romans, he would establish his kingdom. Therefore, we remember now, you see, the two disciples, James and John, they sent uh, uh, their mother to speak to Jesus. No? What did she come and ask? Uh, she went and asked Jesus, saying, no, uh, uh, Lord, uh, please uh, grant my two sons uh, to sit uh, one on the left, one on the right. That means what? Uh, on the left, six are there. Right, six are there. Please give the very next left hand, right hand seat to my two sons, James and John. Correct? No? Huh? Read, Buddha. Matthew 20, 21. Matthew 20, 21. Hmm. Read, Buddha. And he said unto her, What will thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit. The one on the right hand and the another on the left in the kingdom. You see, they all thought uh, that uh, this is going to happen literally. Then itself, uh, the kingdom is going to be established. Then itself, he is going to destroy the Romans and establish there only. Hence, he is selecting the cabinet ministers, the 12 apostles. Everybody followed Jesus. Why? Because leaving all these things. Because they thought uh, they are going to rule in Israel as kings. And uh, Judas would be a treasurer. You see? So, they were all expecting these literal earthly blessings only. You see, even when Jesus died and when he was, uh, you see, resurrected, even then they had the same thought. Read, brother. Luke 24, 21, brother. Luke 24, 21. But we trusted that it had been he we should have remained Israel. And beside all this, today, today is the third day since these things were done. Uh, we trusted that uh, it had been which uh, Jesus had redeemed Israel. We thought Jesus would redeem Israel now itself. Uh, we all thought those things. But uh, Jesus has died. Uh, three days are already over. They were very much discouraged. Uh, Read one more verse. Acts 1, 6, brother. Acts of the Apostles, first chapter 6, verse, brother. Um. Uh, when they, therefore, were come together, they asked he of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? See? At least, Lord, you're going to heaven. Before that time, at least will you restore... Huh? A kingdom in Israel, we will sit on the thrones and rule. This was a little idea. Why? Because they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. So Jesus could read their thoughts that they were very much discouraged because they left everything to follow Jesus. Suddenly, if Jesus said, I am going to go and you are going to be alone, what will happen? Their minds were very much disturbed. Therefore, Jesus said, don't be disturbed. You trust God now? Trust me also. Then what did Jesus say? Read, brother, now. John 14, 2. What did Jesus say? John 14, 2. Hmm. John 14, 2. Hmm. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Ah, what did Jesus say immediately? In my father's house, there are many mansions. Mansions is what? Great palace is there. What happened immediately? Their mind was uh, refreshed. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there are many palaces. Huh? Okay, good, good, good. What did Jesus say? If I go, I will prepare a place for whom? For whom? For us. For us. Uh, immediately, 
the apostles were satisfied. Then read verse 3. What did Jesus say? Uh, continue. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There you may be also. This definitely encouraged the disciples. If I go, I prepare a place. I'll come and take you again. So they all felt uh, satisfied. Uh. Now you tell me, this uh, literally, uh, is there a palace in heaven? Uh? In heaven, there's a little palace. Uh, for each and every person, God is going to prepare a palace uh, where we can enjoy in heaven. Uh. Is it literal? Tell me, is it literal? Literally, we're going to stay in palaces in heaven. Uh. Each and everybody, no. Krishna Buddha will get on palace, Mosam Buddha will get palace, Ashish Buddha will get palace. Huh? Anyway, is it literal? Mm. <laughs> but yeah. in Bible, no, it said that uh, there will be the kingdom of God, then we will roll over to well. Uh, right. Very good. Through, See, Bible says that kingdom of God is going to be there, we shall roll. But where? Sitting in palace, there. <laughs> Each and every total palace. Uh, so you forget okay, about the apostles. How many faithful Christians are there? For each and every faithful Christians, little palace will be built in Levana. Uh, this is all a figurative statement. Uh, this is not a literal statement. Uh. So similarly, in John 14, chapter only, he continued to say, uh, if I go, what will I send? I will send a comfort. Uh, read, brother. John 14, 16 to 18, read, brother. John 14, chapter 16 to 18, read with her. Uh, continue. And I will praise the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even mm -hmm. the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it saith him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelt with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Ah, I will not leave you comfortless. That means I will only come to you through the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus is saying. Huh? He, all these things are literal. Huh? Jesus went to heaven 2000 years before. Now is it literally Jesus staying with us? Tell me. Is Jesus literally within us? Huh? Literally Jesus with us. Physically is with us. No. Tell me, physically is he with us? No. Oh, these, therefore, these are all figurative statements. Therefore, you see, in John 15 chapter, what did Jesus say? I am the true wine and uh, my father is the... Huh? Read, read, brother, John 15, one brother. What's some brother read? Uh. I am the true wine and my father is the husbandman. Oh, then Jesus is the wine. Is it literal or is it figurative statement? It's uh, figurative. Figurative. Jesus is Jesus a wine? Huh? Is our father a farmer? Is God a farmer? Tell me. Is God a farmer, brother? No. No, Mosam Buddha, is God a farmer? Huh? Mosam Buddha, you are there? Yes, brother, I am here. Uh, is God a farmer? No, he is not a farmer. Uh, it's just a comparison. Very good. See, I will put it from the Bible itself. Read John 16, 25. From John 13 chapter to John 16 chapter, Jesus is only speaking to the disciples in the upper room. So what did Jesus say? John 16, 25. Read, brother. Huh? These things read. have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Ah, brother. how did Jesus speak, brother? In Proverbs. Proverbs means what? Is it a direct statement? Mm, it's a direct statement. No, it's like... Very uh, good. It is not a direct statement, but an indirect statement having yeah, indirect. a other meaning. Correct, no? Yeah. See, yes. in uh, Proverbs, uh, there is a word which come, which, which is, uh, 
uh, keep a knife when you are eating with a rich man. Keep a knife to your throat when you are eating with a rich man. One verse is there in props. What does it mean? Does it mean literally that when we are eating with a rich person, we should keep a knife to our throat? Huh? No. That means when you are eating with a rich man, eat cautiously. Don't eat what all you want. Eat very carefully. Eat limitedly. That's what's the meaning. See, this has got a meaning. No? So similarly, what all Jesus said from where? John 14 chapter, 15 chapter, 16 chapter. All these things are symbolic. Jesus said, don't worry. If I go, I'll prepare a place for you and come and take me for it. Uh, not literal. Uh, the places in heaven. What? Heaven is not prepared. Uh. Heaven has to be prepared and built up for us. Uh. It is already built. Uh, already. Uh, you see, nothing has to be done, dear brethren. This is all figurative statement, dear brethren. Uh. And uh, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And he that gives the fruit, my father will prune it. Uh, and he, if he gives more fruit, more pruning will happen. This is all the comparison. End only clearly is told. I am speaking to you all these things in props to encourage you. How did Jesus speak to uh, opposition? No? Like for example, you see the parents speaking to a child. Imagine on the first day of the school. Uh, if the child is going to the school on the first day, how will the child go? Uh, will the child go boldly to the class? Uh, first day. Uh, do you have children? Anybody have this experience, uh, leaving the uh, child to the school for the first day? Does anybody have your experience with that? Okay, so none of you have that experience. Good. See, on the first day, the child gets uh, easily ready. very uh, Because parents tell, come, let us go to school. So what will happen immediately? They will wear everything, okay, take the bag and all. Everybody will come uh, very, uh, you see, joyfully to the school. But once the school, school comes, what will happen? Huh? The parents will come and live near the gate. Then what will happen? The child, huh? it will catch the hand of the parents straightly. Then parents will tell, go, 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 I'll come, I'll come, come. What will the child do? No, 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 you stay with me. Come, 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 come. Parents, what will they tell? No, 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 ma, you go there. You forgot to bring chocolate. I'll go and get the chocolate. I'll be here only. Go, 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 go inside. Correct, huh? But, uh, as uh, children are going inside, uh, uh, what will happen? They will start crying. Yo, my father has left me. Yo, my mother left me. They will start weeping and crying in such a way that they will think that almost they are dead. The parents are dead. At that time, what will the parents comfort them? They will comfort them saying, don't worry, I am with you. I am always with you. I will be here only. See, I will be sitting here only. Don't worry, I will be sitting near the gate only. Go, go fast and come. Huh? Go put uh, say hello to teacher and come fast. I'll be waiting here and these are the words uh, our parents will use. Uh, does it mean that literally the parents are uh, going and sitting into the class along with the uh, uh, children? No, dear brethren, that is the words which Jesus used. Same word Jesus even used at the last. What did he say? Huh? Go and preach the gospel to the ends of the world. Lo, I am with you till the end of the world. Correct now. He said, no, even to the end of the world, I am with you. Does it mean that literally Jesus is with us? No, dear brethren. You see, his presence is always with us. You see, his mercy, his grace is always with us. Dear brethren. Hence, uh, you see, uh, wherever the word, uh, he comes for the Holy Spirit, uh, it is just a comparison. It is not a literal word, meaning that uh, um, Holy Spirit is a person. Dear brethren, actually, See, in Bible, Jesus is compared to light. Jesus is compared to God's word. Jesus is compared to bread of life. Does it mean that all these things are literal? No, no, dear brother. We have studied in the first class how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible? Hear a little? Then what? Tell me, hear a little? Hear a little. Hear a little. Search the scriptures. You see, we need to study the Bible keeping the ten methods of study in mind. There's a symbolic language in the Bible. There's a parabolic language in the Bible. There's a literal statement in the Bible. There's a type and anti-type in the Bible. All these things we need to keep. These are all comparisons. Therefore, you see, how do we check this one? You see, we can check this one using the concordances. 
See, based on the concordances, we come to know the original Hebrew and Greek words that are used in the Bible. You see? Huh? So, <clears throat> the Hebrew word used for spirit is, uh, you see, uh, ruwa. That means uh, the invisible power. You see, uh, that is uh, in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the Greek word used for spirit is pneuma. That again signifies the invisible power, dear brethren. But unfortunately, these words are wrongly translated in several ways in the Bible. Okay. So regarding that one, we are going to study in the next class. So what we are studying today, we are come to know that the Holy Spirit is not a person. It is not a personality. It is just a comparison of all these things that are given in the Bible. Then actually, what is the meaning of Holy Spirit? This one, we are going to study in the next week. Okay, dear brethren. So, any doubts, any questions till now?